Hello and welcome to SciShow Talk Show. That day on SciShow, where we talk to interesting people about interesting things. Today we have on the show Henry Reich, the professor of minute physics. I am not a professor, but I do do minute physics. And Minute Earth, we have new t-shirts. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, so, so Minute Physics and Minute Earth are two of my very favorite YouTube channels in the world. Uh, Thank you. You uh, make really great content, and I don't know how you do it. You, you, you put so much interesting information into such a small package. Um, we just, we like put it in a vacuum and okay. like suck out all of the, the air from it and it just, the, it just like becomes vacuum seeds. It's a word that's, vacuum. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. what happens. So shall I show you some things? Yeah. Today? Yeah. Well, first, uh, you've been on the show before. Yes. But tell us a more, a little, a little bit about yourself. About myself. So, so Sorry, here's I'm, the thing. Are you, do you mean like about myself or about what I do with science yeah. and YouTube yeah, here's, stuff? Here's what I know about Henry. Um, he said to me one time, I wish that I weren't pretty good at a few things and that I was very good at one thing. And, and he, by pretty good, he means that he is a, a, basically a champion marathon runner. This is false. An amazing uh, player of the mandolin. This is also false. And a, uh, you, you are in the, in the top 1% of runners, mandolin players, and physics. Science YouTube fi people. Science YouTube people, yes. <laughs> right. So uh, you are a trained physicist. I am a trained as a physicist. Uh, I also train to run yes. in a different way. Um, and yeah, I do play a lot of music. And those are, those are things that I enjoy doing. I wish I didn't have to sleep because then I could have more time to do all these different things. It's hard. I kind of will go in, in phases where like this is the time where I'm like doing lots of one of these. Like I'll run a lot and then I'll cross country ski a lot and then I'll play oh, mandolin I forgot, a lot. I forgot the cross country ski. Those things are essentially the same. Cross country ski is just running when you can't run because there's snow everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so basically the same thing. All right. So yeah, I go in phases. And actually, it's a, I'm glad you brought up sports because that's actually one I want to talk about today. Oh, you're going to talk about sports. Some sports things. Here on SciShow Talk Show, the show well, about science. there's going to be some science sports. in this, in okay. this sports conversation. So okay. don't worry. Don't worry, people. There is science. So, <laughs> There's physics and everything, Henry. So I need you to put this on. Oh, okay. I'm going to put on a helmet, which is worrying. Is this going to be more or less dangerous than holding a scorpion? I think it will be less dangerous than holding a scorpion. Okay. Although you were putting your face really close. <laughs> Scorpions. My head okay. is bigger than yours. Ow! It got my skin. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Oh, that's a tiny bike. It is a tiny bike. That is a tiny, tiny bike. <laughs> it is a tiny little bike, bike, and I want to talk about how, how bikes, bikes work. work. Why they stay up, why they don't fall over. Yeah, because as far as I can tell, uh, no, like, I don't feel like anyone knows the answer to this question in, com like, in completion. That is, in some ways, a really accurate statement but I think it doesn't mean what you think it means. So we'll get, we'll get to it. Um, Henry. <laughs> so most people tend to think that bikes, uh, if they know like a little bit of physics, they tend to think that bikes stay up because the wheels are spinning and because that means that right. you have conservation of angular momentum and, mm -hmm. and it makes it harder to turn. So most people think that's why bikes stay up. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's demos where you have like a big wheel and you spin it up and you hold it and it is hard to turn. But the force is just the torque that keeps you, it's just not enough. It's not enough. And if that were the case, also then the faster you went, the more stable the bike would be, right. which is also isn't necessarily the case. So you can ride a bike fairly slowly. And the other thing actually is really what I'm talking about isn't even riding bikes, it's pushing bikes with no person on them. Because if you take a bike, I can't do it with this bike in the amount of space we have here, but if you take a bike and you push it, mm -hmm. it can stay up on its own. Like it'll, yeah. it'll kind of turn one way and it kind of self-corrects and doesn't fall over. Some really good YouTube videos of motorcycles yeah. riding exactly. themselves. <laughs> exactly, motorcycles where somebody falls off the motorcycle and, like, and it keeps on going downhill. And and or if it gets stuck, I've seen right. them get stuck and they're just like, I'm coming for you, whoever, yes. Yeah, so basically <laughs> the question is why do bikes, why are they stable, why don't they fall over? And there are essentially, people have done mathematical analyses and what they mean by what you mean by a bike is basically two wheels where you have a frame that has a hinge somewhere in it, mm -hmm. and there's a bunch right. of free parameters like how big are the wheels, where are they positioned, what's the mass distribution, where exactly is the hinge relative mm -hmm. to the wheels, what's what's the angle, um, that sort of thing. It seems to me that the placement of this hinge is a very important. It is because so, like going backwards is not going to be stable, right. stable the same way. So the thing with the thing with bikes is that people have figured out that the way that we build bikes, the way that our bikes generally work, up to a certain speed, you're going so slow that the bike just kind of spirals in and crashes. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't correct its like, it, like it, it corrects, but not fast enough, and it'll crash. Then there's a big speed range where 
as it turns, it'll self-correct and kind of wobble right. back and this, forth. This, like if you're pushing, like, because right. the bike's going to want to go forward because right. it's going forward. So if it starts to turn, it'll but it wants to way. continue going straight so that we, the... That's actually not why it happened. Does not happen. No, it's, okay. not, it's not conservation of momentum in the forward direction either. Well, there's got to be, that has to be some of it. So the reason that we believe bikes that are designed the way that our bikes tend to be designed work is because there's a feedback mechanism between turning and leaning. So what that means is that uh, because, because there's this angle on the fork, the bike isn't actually touching the ground like at the, at the end of, if you extend to where the fork is, right. it actually touches the ground slightly behind that. And what that means is that if you lean the bike, the handlebar turns. And what that means is that if the bike is going forward, it starts leaning a little bit, which would make it fall over. The handlebar turns, and it then basically the wheel comes back underneath it. So the, the wheel self-corrects and comes under the bike, bringing it upright again. So you, t you lean, turn the wheel, and the bike then self-corrects. Mm -hmm. And then it might overcorrect and go the other way. But basically, it's a self-correcting correcting mechanism. And there, there can be gyroscopic effects from that, where when you turn, it, it helps the handlebar turn. Um, but people have built bikes where the wheels are really small or where they have a wheel that's spinning the opposite direction right. to cancel out the gyroscopic effect. So the gyroscopic effect is absolutely has nothing to do with how bikes stay up. Um, it can help them stay up, but it really doesn't. It isn't the main thing. Can we explain the gyroscopic effect real quick? Because what sure, is the that? Sure, the gyroscopic is, effect is basically conservation of angular momentum. Basically the point is like if I push, if it's spinning and I push it up this way, it'll actually turn that way. So it, it, it gets done nine, it, it's basically, the torque takes effect 90 degrees out of phase. And um, this is how they actually move spacecraft in the air without launching propellants out of them. It's, not, it is one way of doing not it, Not to yeah. push them, but to change their to orientation turn, yeah, exactly. in space. Yeah, you can, you can use gyroscopes to do that. But, but the thing with, with, this, with bikes is that there are actually, there are so many kind of free parameters with how you can build a bike mm -hmm. if your definition of bike is like two wheels, frame, and a hinge. Um, that you, people have designed bikes that have backwards forks that are stable, that will ride on their own. They just have to change like mass distributions and other things. People have designed bikes that have the, the hinge uh, in the back that basically can ride backwards and be stable. And this is what, what I meant when I say like, we don't know why bikes stay up, is that we don't know what, what like actual collection of parameters for this, what we mean by a bicycle that, that is necessary for it to stay upright. Like we know that if we change certain things about our design, it'll start to fail. But if you change them far enough, it will start to succeed again. What I want to know is, did you walk into a bike shop and say, I need a tiny bike? Yes, I did. <laughs> in fact, the bike shop is like right underneath our office. Yeah. I walked in yeah. there like, and- Can I just borrow said, a tiny bike? Yeah, they actually I rent promise. out. This is a kiddie bike. I think it's for kids that are too little to like- Yeah, they kick, they pedaling push. and stuff as they kick with their feet. Yeah. It's perfect. It's yeah, perfect. perfect. Perfect for, for a doing demo. demos about- yeah about bicycles. So. You don't need to have pedals yeah. for it to be a bicycle. That is very true. It's very not true. in the list of things you listed. It's not in the list of things. <laughs> now you know why we don't know why bicycles stay up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, yes. Do you want to try ride it? <laughs> I don't because you, you rented it and I don't want to injure it. Well, I think, I think the rental is normally intended for, for being used to be ridden. But not but by a fully grown that's man. That's true. It is yes. <laughs> smaller, a smaller human being. Do you want to meet an animal? Yes, okay. let's meet an animal. <laughs> this is Rook the raven. Hi, Rook the raven. Hello. It's wow. so easy to, you to have no idea how huge you actually oh, are. They're until really you're big. Right up. big. We have Rook because he was found in the wild with a broken wing. And that wing was already healed, it was calcified. We couldn't, you couldn't re-break it. We couldn't do anything to it. It has to just stay there. He can't extend his wing. He gets thrown off balance a lot. Um, even we have wing tips, feathers as well. I actually trim those off because it's held in such an awkward way that those the primary feathers get stuck between his legs and he, he trips on them. So I actually trim those off to help him out um, a little bit more. And the stuff that I have going on down here, those are anklets, jesses, and a leash. Because he can't fly, and if he does get spooked and he jumps off my hand, he'll crash land. He'll, he'll land on his face. So, so even as, as bad as that looks, it's actually safer to have him land exactly. or not land, be hanging. To hang and then get righted back up. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm there sorry. you go, buddy. Hi. Yeah. I want to be free again. I'm angry. It can't happen. Yeah, it can't happen. He was extremely malnourished when they found him oh. and picked him up. They brought him to a rehab facility and they fed him up. I mean, it, it, took, it took a couple months to get him healthy again to the point where they knew that he was going to make it and live. But once they realized that, okay, he's going to live now, where is he going to live? Mm -hmm. 
So they called us up and we said, yeah, we'll, we'll work on taking him in. And um, that's, a, that's a pretty big um, responsibility to take on, an adult raven from the wild. Mm -hmm. They are incredibly intelligent. I mean, they're up there with great apes and dolphins and humans for intelligence. Mm -hmm. These guys do things like they point, they use their beak to point at objects and they use communication where they pick it up and they'll show it off to another raven, usually their mate, saying, hey, look what I found, look at this thing right here. Yeah, good So, time. So does he get depressed then from being you know, not in the wild? From not being in the wild, that's, defi that's definitely a concern. So we try and give him a lot of behavioral enrichment, so things that keep him really busy. Are you, are you trying to figure that out? Yeah, he's like, this thing is attached yeah. to my feet. Well, when I take the leash off, he can actually pull those jesses out of there. Oh. So he's, he's used to like, nope, and that goes on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he can't do that when I have the leash on. Um, I know. Are we done? We might have to be done. Yeah. Okay, Rook had to go. <laughs> he had to go. He, he, was, he was not enjoying this. Well, I mean, that's, that's a lot to ask from a wild raven to be surrounded by people with lights on you and, yeah. and uh, to have the jesses and the, and the anklets on him. That's just making him even more angry. So that's understandable for him. Um, the reason that we continue to work with him and don't just leave him alone is to make sure that he doesn't get depressed. Um, we want to give him a lot of behavioral enrichment. So uh, that means make him work for his food, which is what he'd be doing in the wild. Mm -hmm. He'd be looking for a mate, or he would be found a mate, and he would be monogamous. These guys mate for life, or for very, very long times. And then they form little social hierarchies within a group. We would like to supply that for him. It's difficult in captivity. It's like an arranged marriage. You never really mm -hmm. know what's going to happen. But um, so, so social interactions, and then finding food. That's going to be huge. So we try and hide his food all over the place in his enclosure, and constantly try and stimulate his mind. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have an enclosure that is it's like a handicapped enclosure. You know, I'm actually happy with his progress. We've had him for about a year, and so I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with where he is now. Mm -hmm. No idea what happened to Rook? We don't know what yeah. happened to Rook, nope. It's up in here, it just, you know, he could have been hit by a car, he could have been bit by a predator, he could have fallen out of a tree the wrong way. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he's pretty good at maneuvering around, but he's not, he hasn't really perfected. I don't know if he can perfect it. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder how old he is. We really have no way of telling, he's an adult. Yeah. Um, and so was he out in the wild for, you know, three months or was it, you know, three years? We don't know how well he was. He was really malnourished, but who knows how well he could right. have gone around and eaten, you know, berries or, or whatnot. And yeah, it's amazing how long and capably animals can sometimes survive yeah. after being, you know, very, very ser seriously injured. Emily mm -hmm. Grassley uh, once showed me the bone of some kind of ungulate that had had a compound fracture that had healed around the fracture so that like, and the, the animal continued to live for years wow. with the bone sticking out of its leg. Wow. Animals are, are pretty yeah. darn resilient. And, and, and just very, like, I am a weakling. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, my toe hurts. <laughs> So right, oh, it'll, it'll heal I and have, calcify around it, it and you'll yeah. survive. Just I like, got to the point where like you were going to be dying though, I think you're, your like in, inspiration to do more would right. definitely kick in. Maybe, and you but would, you I do whine an awful lot. lot as it is. <laughs> I should take I should take a hint from Rook and just be like, I'm gonna I, I'm, if, I don't care. I'm gonna try and fly. <laughs> I I haven't been able to fly in years, but I'll continue to try. I'm try. Now I have a question: Is there any potential to like do prosthetic wings in situations like this where you can help, or is it just, or is this a case where it was just so badly like? muscle damage that there was no hope for it, it there was there was no hope there was no hope going back um it, it was broken in several places and um just so extensively calcified like it, it created this big it, it just it cannot extend um mm. so there really was no changing that i mean the, the best thing we could do for it, it i mean either leave it there and, and, and clip it off but if there was any further damage amputate the wing mm -hmm. i mean that's where you would go with that um there is this thing called imping, though, that if you are trying to rehab a bird to go back out in the wild, mm -hmm. if they have been um, I don't know, hit by a car or stripped of, of their primaries for some reason and, and they're just not growing back fast enough, you can imp them by taking other feathers from another bird um, that didn't make it and you, you glue them on mm -hmm. and so they, their bone is fine, but if you glue them on there, they can use those until their other ones grow in. And you can actually release them like that. And the other <laughs> primaries wow. will grow in and push those fake ones out. So wow. that's really awesome. Weird. Yeah. Cool. Yeah.
prosthetic would be really neat, but I don't well, know. That's, that's basically what this is, though. Yeah, basically prosthetic feathers. Yeah, yeah, yeah but no, bo no, feather no bones. Feather transplants. Yeah, feather yeah. transplants. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thanks, yeah. for, thanks for sharing Rick with us. Yeah, thank you. yeah. If yeah. you want to see more of what Jesse's up to, you can check her out at youtube.com slash Animal Wonders Montana. And Henry is at Minute Earth and Minute Physics. I'm Hank. Thank you for watching this episode of SciShow Talk Show. If you want to keep getting smarter with us, you can go to youtube.com slash SciShow and subscribe. Mm -hmm.